This is your moderator, Hiroja Scheib, and I'm here with my season four predictions and my Mr. Robot Two Shoot Two T-shirt giveaway. Uh, sorry for the uh, different kind of locale. Um, had a Go work for the man earlier than I expected, so I wasn't able to do this video proper. So here we go. So season three ended with a basically a reset. You have Elliot and Mr. Robot back on the same side, if you will. You have Philip Price uh, still in control of E Corp, but not for very long. You have Angela, you know, just kind of being kind of back in her state of season one where she is a little bit lost, you know. She doesn't have a solid positioning in life. She's not meeting her goals, if you will. Darlene's back to the state where she was give no fucks Darlene. Uh, and White Rose is still in charge of her project, the Washington Township plant. Tyra Wellick, you know, he is still at E Corp. But he has the position he desired, but he has none of the power that he desires. So everyone's kind of back to square one. And it would be interesting to see what Sam Esmail and the writers do from here. Because with the rewind, if you will, the reset, the going back in time and undoing uh, the 5-9 hack... Is that going to make a difference? We saw a bit of a social commentary and dialogue from uh, Darlene's companion at the end teaser when we saw the return of Veer, the drug dealer, the brave traveler, that it's not going to make a damn difference. Everyone will be in debt. E Corp will, you know, still be shit. The, the economy will be what it is, and the wealthy, the rich are still going to prosper. And yet, Elliot has this notion in his head. And I've talked about it through season one, season two, not so much season three, but just a little bit, how he thinks he can be the hero. He believes he can solve this somehow. And it's his major flaw. And now that he knows, you know, the extent of the Dark Army, he still has that malware, which I'm sure they'll probably boot him out soon enough. But... He still thinks he can win this. And Phil Price made a very pointed comment to him. And kind of pointed comment to a lot of would-be revolutionaries that leaders inspire the agenda. And right now, Elliot is a leader of a cause with no followers. Yeah, he has Darlene, but everyone else is pretty much dead or devastated. Which makes me come to my first prediction. I believe that one, that Angela is going to be a leader that inspires the agenda. She's going to go on full vengeance mode and she's going to try to fuck up the Washington Township plant delivery. Either by taking pieces of it, stopping it all together, exposing it for what it is, whatever her plan is Angela's going to do that and she's going to inspire the agenda within I would say E Corp E Corp right now I would say the morale is very low amongst the troops I think a lot of people are very shaky, hesitant that they're going to get fired, they're going to get canned if you will, because all that's gone on you know, they're working here because they need those e-coins they need a paycheck if you will and not because they want to be with this corporation, with this uh, company. And I think Angela somehow will inspire within E Corp the need, the desire to rise up and be like a good force of financial well being. At the same time, taking out the Washington Township plant, if you will. Um, I think Angela will somehow morph, in, morph in into White Rose. I think she will become obsessed with, as what is it that Philip Price said, with her delusion and start whacking motherfuckers right and left to get her agenda done, which is 
to get back at White Rose because White Rose, in essence, made her a murderer. You know, Angela did go f- with the plan. She knew she was making a, a terrorist act. She thought she was taking E Corp from within, but she constantly act, asked about the evacuation plan that they had. You know, we're going to get these people out. We're not actually going to kill people. We're just blowing objects. Of course, that's not what happened. And maybe part of her knew that was not, that's what was going to happen. Maybe not. Maybe she was that naive and thinking, you know, rah, rah to the cause. Second, making her believe that her mother would come back. That whatever the Washington Township device is. And um, I'm actually going to do a completely separate video on the Washington Township plant. But, yeah. Uh, Making her believe that she can have her mother back, that the dead would come back, really fucked with her. More, I think more so than the death of, what is it, three to 4,000 people? More so than that. So we have that going on. Um, So yeah, I think Angela is gonna morph into White Rose in season four. She is going to fuck up with the Washington Township plant delivery. Uh, two, Dom. Dom's going to be the best damn mole the Dark Army ever had. She is going to suppress all expectations. And this is going to perturb Irvin. Because Irvin knows. He's seen her. He knows she wasn't going to turn. And the only reason she turned was because of the threat of the family. But now... She's going to be the best, best mole ever, ever, ever in existence. When you pull up all the mole categories, all the, you know, spy traders, whatever, she's going to be the best, the goddamn best ever. And we're going to see her, I think, conflict with Elliot and Angela and F Society, but build her own. Maybe we'll get an insight in her inner murky mind of how she's going to get back at Irvin get back at the dark army but she is going to be the greatest fucking mole ever and i think people are going to be very shocked how well she does how gusto she is how diligent she is how exemplary she is in her job and people are going to start hating her because she's probably going to do some actions and acts they're going to test her um some vile things and she's going to do it without hesitation she's just going to do what is necessary to keep her family alive. Uh, so that is for season four. If she survives season five or season four somehow and gets to season five, then I think we'll see the flipping. But for season four, best damn mole ever. Uh, let's see. Irvin. Irvin will be back. Don't know when in what capacity. Maybe he'll be back to his old position, but he'll be back. Um... Darlene. I think Darlene's got to go. I think Darlene is what Dom said she is. A very terrible person. We already know this. But her blasé attitude kind of. Her not exactly the kind of breakdown that we saw a little bit from Elliot. um, Realizing what he had done um, with Trenton and Moby. And with... Uh, the fact that he might be losing his sister, the fact that Angela's completely cracked. We saw some of that from Angela from the very kind of beginning with Cisco, but that was kind of a reflection of herself because it had to deal with herself really, because she loved Cisco and Cisco and her together, I guess, were going to be this thing and they were going to do things together. So it was a more of a her thing. Um, I don't think she has any sense of empathy. I think she might be an actual like sociopath. And she's got to go. She's got to go. She's had some really kind of fuck ups. She's not as good as she thinks she is. And I think she's going to get got somehow. And I'm not, as much as I love the character, <laughs> kind of with it, all the actions and totality of it all upon reflection, I'm not going to be terribly sad that she's gone. I just want to make, the, I want to know if the death is going to be very awesome is all. So, yeah, my prediction is season four, Darlene is going to die. I know that seems to be everyone's prediction, but for every season, but I think this is finally, it's finally going to happen, season four. Uh, Okay, so Elliot. So we had Veer show up. That's the wild card. I have no idea where they're going to go there. 
that I stated in the, the my season review that can be either the jump the shark moment or if they stick the landing one of the greatest moments in television I don't know what their, their conflict's going to be. I don't know what his agenda is or whatever or how it's going to deal with Elliot. But I think Elliot, he needs to somehow be, as Philip Price says, the leader that inspires the agenda. He needs to come up with a plan that deals with both the Dark Army and Evil Corp. And as well as the rest of the one percenters that have benefited. I'm not sure just hacking is going to do it. And I'm not a proponent for violence or anything like that, but I, I think we're going to need some really more out-of-the-box thinking from Elliot on this. And not only that, but some really serious inspiration, whether it be Elliot in the Elliot form or Elliot in the Mr. Robot form, like some really hardcore, serious, rah-rah, I can see why people follow him, like into the canons type of revolutionary thinking and thought. That's my expectation. The other expectation is they gotta explain how it is that neither Elliot or nor Mr. Robot at this point in the show know that White Rose, they know about the Washington Township plant and device, but that she was behind it the whole time. I mean, did they know? Did they care? If she was part of the Washington Township plant device, a device, whatever you will, um, why hasn't he really gone after her the same gusto that he's gone after Evil Corp? It, it kind of doesn't make sense. Did he find out about the device kind of like last minute when he was hacking through the Dark Army and realized its, its importance? Why did he not know beforehand? Because it's very strange that the Dark Army, Evil Corp and all that, um... You know, they have this bond, they have this linkage that goes by, back decades that Elliot was unaware of it. And it all centers around the Washington Township plant, which, as I stated before, is a MacGuffin. But I want to go in detail by explaining the histories of MacGuffins in film, um, you know, how it, what type of MacGuffin the Washington Township plant and device is and its implications for not only the series, but its, its moments throughout the seasons. Um, going to go real detail in the editing for this. Yes, you might see some Adobe Pro going on. But anyways, um, that is the one wrinkle of all of this that's really bothered me. And it's bothered me, quite frankly, since season two. A little bit from season one, because we got the tease, but really season two, when we find out exactly the stint the White Rose is associated with the Washington Township plant. And finally, we need to find out exactly how Elliot Alderson died. I think we're going to find that out season four because the dates don't match. His collapse in the movie theater and his um, death date don't match. I'm wondering if maybe, even though he collapsed and everything, that maybe he his cancer recovered because he was going through treatments, he didn't stop, and they killed him anyways? Or he did something in those last moments to cause the Dark Army to actually kill him? Did they give them cancer? I mean, there, there's, there's a little, there's some little caveats there. There's some, some little explanation that needs to go on. And finally, they need to explain how Elliot has a split personality because what is known and documented is anyone who has a split personality is primarily a direct result of trauma, like really abusive trauma in their childhood. And this is the development of the personalities as a way of protecting the mind. And thus far, we haven't seen that from Elliot's father. We've seen some of that from his mother, but his mother hasn't made an appearance since really season two. So, we need to see something. We need to see that really abusive trauma or something going on to explain the fact that Elliot has this uh, superhero worship-like personality. Because it can't be just from a head trauma. That's, that doesn't make sense. That's, just, that's not how that works. 
so I think that we'll see Elliot's, Edward Alderson's death and the breakdown of that. We may even see more of Angela's mother and her position and relationship to the Washington Township Plant Development and exactly what it is that she did as Angela goes in her pursuit of vengeance. For the most part, those, those are my predictions. Uh, Darlene's going to die. We're going to find out how Elliot, or not Elliot, but Edward Alderson is going to die. Uh, Angela's going to turn into White Rose, go on vengeance mode. I think Phil Price is going to die. Tyler Wellick is going to stew for a while on season four. I really don't know what his position is now that he's CTO and has no power, but he's still with Elliot, so we'll see. He's, he's another wild card like Veer. Uh, Dom, best double agent ever in existence. Uh, what else? That's pretty much it. The only other announcements I have is that um, I participated in a season ending kind of reflection on season three with Mr. Rewatch, that podcast show. I have the link in the show notes. It's supposed to come out in January with a bunch of other podcasters. Um, as soon as it comes out, um, I'll promote it, I'll share it. If they have a YouTube video, I'll share it on my channel if they want to. And it was a great discussion. Um, I have the information in the, the links below. Um, also, there are um, unwatched, I'm not unwatched, unmasked podcasts, which is another Mr. Robot podcast, are doing a marathon starting at 12 p.m. Eastern on New Year's Day of the first season of Mr. Robot. I have links in the show notes to the event as well as their Twitter so you can follow along and go through the season one watch um, rewatch with them i also have a link to a bunch of other mr robot po podcasts and reviewers i think that are awesome and great that you guys might enjoy their insights about the show uh, i also have a link down below if you want to you like what i'm doing want to be helpful to all the different various uh amazon affiliate associated links to the different things that were popped up to mr robot from the music to the first two seasons, to uh, Bad Motherfucker Wallets, to movies that were mentioned in the show, which comes to my nice little segue. I will be reviewing the movies that have some influence on Mr. Robot. Uh, Fight Club, I already done Pulp Fiction this season, so I'll be doing P Fight Club, uh, Back to the Future 2, Shallow Grave, uh, there's a couple more, but the one, oh, The Hitcher, which was a horror um, film that I mentioned that, you know, the first, I would say, definitely the first eight episodes of the show were definitely had horror-esque elements to it. Um, I talked about this on Mr. Rewatch, but I think Mr. Number Eight, where Elliot is talking to, to Trenton's brother, was a ghost, a ghost-themed horror, where he's talking to a ghost, talking to the dead, if you will. 9 and 10 were more like suspense thrillers. That can sometimes delve into the horror, but yeah. Okay, so um, the big one is called The Quiet Earth. Quiet Earth is a cult Australian classic film that I think has significant influences on White Rose and her project. And so I'm going to do a review of that. Uh, these reviews will be coming out every other week. Uh, throughout the year kind of spreading them out we don't know exactly when mr robot's coming back but it'll be a little bit entertaining i but the priority will be um my mr mcguffin video which i think i'll have coming out next wednesday and um my my attempt to interview or talk about the arg mr robot game is still ongoing it hasn't been solved so i'm gonna see if i can get somebody on to talk about it um and of course, promoting my um, appearance on Mr. Rewatch podcast, and then from from there. So basically, look out for Mr. McGuffin video about the Washington Township plant, uh, the a Mr. Robot ARG. I'll uh, be trying to get somebody on to talk about that and how that has influenced throughout and developed over the seasons. Um, Mr. Rewatch that. Um, is coming out some point in January, and then uh, Quiet Earth is probably one of the 
one of the really key movie reviews that I'm doing that wasn't on the show, but I think its influences can be seen this this season in particular. I'll be doing a review of that. So thank you for watching and listening. Um, the first person to you know again, who was a subscriber and comment on this video will get a T-shirt. And again, the second T-shirt will go to the best comment that was made to us by a subscriber. So it's been a great season, you all. Um, I hope you enjoy my additional content that I'll be doing. Um, I do have um, other shows that I will have uh, linked in the channels above. Uh, Hiroshi's Thought Bubble, where I talk about cryptocurrency. Uh, Hiroshi's Shy Space Odyssey, I'm kind of retooling. Um, I'm looking to do for this maybe I might do it on this channel but I'm looking to do more like really in-depth tech reviews um, about some of the technical like stuff that about particularly because of net neutrality about how to build your own mesh network how to do, run a node for these different um, open source software programs that would help make a more um, better communication device and sensor resistance um, it might be on this channel, it might be a different channel. I might update you on my, during the Washington Township in-depth review uh, about the MacGuffin. So thank you for all for listening, and until next time, this is Rosha Shai, vlogging off for now.